almost ten after seven, so uh, so we'll get the uh, the here from called meeting to order. This is a an appeal a request by G and K Rentals LLC uh, regarding the denial of a request for a permit to reconnect to reconnect or allow for re reconnection of plumbing to a studio unit at Thirty Nine Mill Street. Thank you. My name is Alan Seawall. I'm an attorney from Northampton. I represent G and K, and I think you know Peter Julius is here before you, uh, one of the principals of G and K. What's before you tonight is a very, very simple question, and that question is: For how long has this studio unit been at 39 May, uh, Middle Street? Because under the statute which I gave you, if that improvement or that um, alteration of 39 Middle Street is more than 10 years old, it becomes a protected nonconformity under MGL Chapter 48, Section 6. This is a reading from uh, Chapter 48, Section 7. And um, what's not at issue here is what the records of Town Hall say. The records of the Town Hall can say whatever they say, but if there's a, a modification of a building and it's more than 10 years old, no matter what happens in Town Hall, the statute of limitations is run and no enforcement action can be taken and it is a protected non-conforming use under uh, the recent amendments to Chapter 48, Section 7. So I have provided you with a, what we believe is the timeline um, for this property. <coughs> In about 1948, um, a Chunglo purchased this property. And it stayed in the Chunglo family until 2009. The Chunglos listed the property in 2009. And the listing sheet, which is Exhibit 1, specifically lists out four units. Like everything, like all the other documents in in this in town hall, it lists out unit one, unit two, unit three, and unit four. Unit four at the time was renting for $160 a month. So this was known to be a, a three-family, but in fact there were four units in there when it was listed in 2009. Now, the next document is the deed from the attorney in fact for Helen B. Chunglo to Carolyn M. Luc Hart Lucian and P Patricia O'Leary Robitaille. And that was on April 23rd, 2009, more than 10 years ago. The next document is the listing sheet when those bu the buyers, uh, Hart Lucian and Robitaille, were ready to sell. They too list Unit 1, Unit 2, Unit 3, and Unit 4. document number four is the seller statement of property condition that was filled out by Hart Lucian and O'Leary who was formerly known as Robitaille and if you turn to page six of eight number of units four if you go back to the first page question number seven during the seller's ownership, has work been done for which a permit was required? Answer, no. So they didn't do any work. They didn't create this unit. It was existing when they bought it in 2009. The next document, just for the record, is the deed from Hart Lucian and Robitaille 
to G and K Rentals LLC. Now, we're here today asking you to overrule the building inspector and ordering him to allow this unit to be reconnected. Um, what happened was that um, in September of 2018, after buying this property, Mr. Jelinas and his partner, Mr. Kitsa, met with Mr. Nyhart, and they discussed the four units, the fourth unit. And they offered to come to this board to get a finding to, what they, to do what they thought they needed to do to validate this unit. Instead of working with them without any notice, without any apparent investigation to figure out when this unit was created, without any due process whatsoever, Mr. Nyhart ordered the plumbing to be disconnected from this unit wrongfully and in violation of my client's rights. And why would Mr. Nyhart do that without any investigation, without any due process? Well, because Mr. Nyhart harbored ill will against Mr. Jelinas. And I have provided you with the email that demonstrates Mr. Nyhart's animus towards Mr. Jelinas. Now, I am not here tonight asking you to do anything about that. We have decided that we will take that issue either to the select board or to the State Ethics Commission. And it's not before you tonight. I'm not asking you to make any findings about the animus between these two people. I'm asking you to make a finding that that <coughs> unit's been there for more than 10 years. And therefore, the statute of limitations has run, and it's a protected nonconformity. At my, at, at my, uh, on my advice, G and K uh, had their plumber apply to reconnect that unit because it was my view that, given the record in this case, that unit having been there for more than ten years, uh, they were entitled to reconnect that unit. And um, the plumbing inspector denied that, uh, that permit, and when the plumber asked why it was being denied, he was told that it was being denied because Mr. Nyhart ordered the plumbing inspector to deny it. Now, I'm happy to field any questions you may have, but I think that the, the record, the paper record here, is indisputable that this unit has been there for at least 10 years. And that's what I'm asking you to find. I'm asking you to order the building inspector to allow the reconnection of that unit and allow it to be occupied. I have, I have a question. Sure. Um, in regard to the the ten year statute of limitations, if a after that runs and you're now dealing with a uh, <clears throat> non conforming structure, pre existing non conforming structure, how, how, what? How do all the things like the egresses and other parts of like the building code or the I don't know I don't actually even really know it's a little bit outside of our scope here but uh, like sprinklers like the for like numbers of units like how do those things apply to non-conforming things they don't apply at all uh, you know you're talking about two separate bodies of law you have the state building code plumbing code the electric code all those codes and then you have the zoning code we're only talking about zoning here if 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 there are other issues that uh, that, that have not been disclosed by Mr. Nyhart to any of us. Um, I'm, I'm happy to hear that, but that was never the issue. My understanding of the issue was that it was an illegal fourth unit under zoning. When but, I when but if I, we if we so if we do find that it's a fourth unit and 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 again this might be outside of what we're what we're finding tonight, but uh, I just I'm just curious and uh, maybe, uh, maybe we don't really need to know that we could even make a final. Be subject to that, but um, it would just be curious to me, like what what happens with all the other, like what what is the status of the non-conforming structure? Like does just being called a unit does, does, is what authority does that give the, the unit over uh, like a non-conforming unit with like, like I said like an egress thing, for instance, like. Those are, let me just say it's outside the jurisdiction yeah. of this board because you know that's the state board board of appeals that that we would take those issues to. This is strictly zoning. Right. And so they're just like ships passing in the night. 
But we would not. But what I'm, what I guess, what I'm getting at is that, like, we don't have the authority to. Like, we could say that, we can make a finding that it's been there for ten, for more than ten years. But we can't make a finding. We, we that like you said, th those are all outside of our scope. So we would be making any type of finding. I would assume, subject to the, whatever other approvals are out there, right? For mm -hmm. for a unit in that case. The the question before the board is for as as applies to zoning. Is this a, a non-conforming, protected non-conforming structure? Because the fourth unit has been there for at least 10 years. Everything else is irrelevant to this, to what we're here to talk about tonight. If Mr. Nye had has other issues in wearing his other hat, which is state building code enforcer, we'll talk to him about that. But right now he's wearing the zoning enforcement hat. But you say, um that somehow, because if, let's say, if it fits within that 10 year time frame, um, just because it's within that 10 year time, 10 year time frame, doesn't necessarily mean that as a non-conforming uh, structure that it can't be denied something. Because we've had non-conforming structures, people have asked for modifications of one type or another, and if it was not, uh, detrimental, not more detrimental to the community, mm -hmm. then it was approved. But if it was more detrimental, it was not approved. So my question would be here, um, is this more detrimental or non-detrimental? <laughs> we're, we're not asking to modify the unit in any way. So it's a, that's not a question that's relevant. Yes. We're not, we're not <coughs> making any changes to the unit. We're just trying to reconnect the plumbing that Mr. Nyhart wrongfully ordered to be disconnected. So we're not modifying anything. And so a finding only, uh, and, you know, the, the finding that it's not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing use only applies when there's a change. Uh, are we looking for a finding here or no. an appeal to deny or approve? <coughs> I, think we'd be, I, think you, I think he's asking us to make a finding on the existence of a fourth unit. Because uh, it's but if I may, why, why during the short abridged description of the property it lists total units and then in the unit descriptions it lists four? Why that discrepancy consistently through every MLS listing? <clears throat> here's a, here's a, a realtor who may be able to help you. As a broker, when we enter the data, first off, to protect ourselves, we use the lowest common denominator, but we have a button. So all of these sources, and I know Mr. Nyhart presented some too, that came off the internet they syndicate out from our same source data. So when I, if I list a property for sale as a realtor broker. On MLS. Yeah, I click a button and it imports the book page, D number, the number of you, it imports that data. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I think that was one of the things I was trying to say to Alan is I, I get that it says three family, but it's been documented as four units. So yeah, I, I, don't, I don't doubt that the town said it's a three family. It's been four units for over 10 years. So. That's why the data discrepancy will continue over and over and over and over and over again because as Just realtors, we pull, it. well, it, it's, it protects us because when, we're, when we fill out the listing forms, we put the source and you will put public record because that's where we syndicate from. It's safer for us um, in a way too because it, the data came from somewhere. So that's why you continuously see the discrepancy. And that data probably came from the, the property card, which it lists this as a three family. Yes. Uh, we don't deny any of that. We don't deny that this, this town hall is full of documents saying three family. Do what I'm know, saying is that that's irrelevant. Was there, um, I'm not familiar with that. I've, I've never been inside the property, so I'm not familiar with it. Um, is there any record of when an actual change to the property was made? Because one of the things I'm kind of wondering is, I, I understand for $160 a month, it sounds like this is probably a small unit. Oh, yeah. um, and I mean, it's a studio. Yeah. yeah. It's but, can, but can I start just calling one part of my house a separate unit and then wait 10 years and say, now I have a two family home? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm you not can. Sure if that's true. It's absolutely true. That I can just start calling my. I don't have to make any changes to it or anything. No, I can no, just start no. calling you, my house a two family home. You create a, a separate unit with a, a separate housekeeping unit with a kitchen and a bathroom. And a living quarter. Well, that's what I'm asking about when that change was made. When, like, when was there actually construction done? 
because more than ten years ago. That's all we yeah. can say. I mean, yeah, this right. this chunglo is is no longer. Because it also it seems like part of what's part of like part of this like statute it seems like there's actually a, an affirmative action taken to like make a change to a house, like of like putting right. a kitchen in or whatever. That's right. Because and that's why if it and understanding that it's a small unit, I'm kind of like wondering, like was there ever actually a, an action? that would even trigger the 10 years or did somebody just start calling it a unit? And I don't really know how that would qualify if you just start calling it a unit. Well, somebody put a bath, and this is exhibit six. Somebody put in a bathroom, and you can see these photographs were taken by Mr. Jolinas during the walkthrough before he bought. There's a bathroom, there's a kitchen, there's toothpaste on the counter, and somebody was living there, obviously. Yeah. There's a bed. Uh, I, I mean, it's not it's not high class living, but something. I don't know that occupancy makes it into a, a unit. No, yeah, it makes I it. I don't necessarily know that that's the unit in question, but I I do have a couple. Well, of Mr. Jolinas will tell you that he took the photograph. I do have a couple of questions. Um, one is a comment. I believe that to convert a one family to a two family, you have to go through the zoning board. You have to get first go through the uh, building inspector and then zoning board to get approval for converting. So if somebody just threw this unit in there, um, Andrew's question holds, when did that happen and what are their permissions for? Well, I don't the even whole know. point of the statute of limitation is to deal with changes that didn't get permission. That would be subject to enforcement action if it's done within 10 years. I know that uh, Andrew's a, a lawyer, he understands what the statute of limitation means. It means that somebody's done something wrong but the government has waited too long <coughs> to take action to, to change it. That's what this is. Second question, when was the plumbing disconnected and then, yeah, when was it plumbed, it, that unit? It was plumbed more than 10 years ago. That's all we can tell you, because no one pulled a permit. It doesn't look, yeah. When we, when we called, my office, um, somebody from Allen's called the town hall and asked both the assessor's office and the building department what existed on the property, because I don't particularly enjoy conflict, and the, the point was, let's see what information we can find out here, because we bought the property knowing there were four units, and, and that was presented to the bank and everything in terms of that. And so when we had called down, um, she was told that the assessor's office didn't have anything. I believe they, they said they'd go back six years, or roughly, to the card, and the billing department mentioned they had something about the fire escape, but, but we were never presented with anything else, so we didn't have much else to go on. Um, other than the listings and the history of it having shown the four units. I don't think it's been for sale prior to that, to 1948. Yeah, it was well, 1948 and then again in 2000, uh, 2009. So I don't know how long it's been even a three family or a two family to that, to that end. What, yeah, it seems to um, alternate in here what makes three it, and four and three and four. What makes, it, what makes a unit, getting back to that, like, that question? Uh, sanitary facilities, cooking facilities, and a living quarter. Are there cooking facilities? Absolutely. Because I just, I mean, there's a microwave. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. Well, all you need is a hot microwave. microwave. Yeah. I can put a microwave in like my second bedroom. There was a hot. There again. was a hot plate. A hot plate. In the photo. No, it's not no. There's, there's a, a little fridge. It was. It was. It's, it's a, a typical st studio. It's I a mean, neat sanitary. But that's not. But so like. So that's what I'm saying. So like, it's not even clear to me that there was any violation. Of, like, so this like statute is about when there's been a violation. Maybe someone put in a kitchen. Someone makes a unit. I mean, I don't think plugging a hot plate and putting a microwave into like into an area of a house like turns it into a unit. Well, there's a bathroom and living quarters separate. But there's bathrooms all, all over people's but houses. But the bathroom wasn't hooked up. Yes, it was. Until yeah, so Mr. Nyhide ordered it to be no, unconnected. No, no, that's important. Can I, can I start saying a few things? Because <laughs> there was been a lot of just statements here that are uh, essentially untrue. Let's start off with the very beginning. Uh, this email for, with this guy from Northampton. Yes. Uh, there was some mutual work uh, associated with a house in Northampton, the owner. Uh, we, we had a um, disagreement and uh, parted our ways. And again, that was very cordial because at, at the end, you know, after a couple few weeks or so, I don't know what the timeline is, I went to his office, shook his hand. But I, the, the email that you might see in there has to do with a gentleman that owned property in Northampton. Irrelevant to anything else here, other than me saying, look, sir, if you want me to help you 
on some code issues, I'll be more than willing to help you separately. And then everything was dropped. It was fine. With regard to the information that we got, I, I never worked with Mr. Gelinas on this property. I worked with his contractor. How we started this whole thing off was we unfortunately had to put a stock work order on the house. There was uh, work being done on the house. Not a single permit was taken out. The first thing that apparently was being done was a lot of the plumbing was removed out of the house. So I put a stock work order on. The contractor came. We discussed it. I wanted some, first of all, I wanted some sketches of the floor plans, which he gave me. And we went over together and looked at the house. And, and he was telling me what he was going to do on this property which uh, was fine. There is a room, as we were as you guys were discussing, with them on the second floor that has its own bathroom. At the time I was up there, the contractor said that they want to make this a fourth unit. I said, well, unfortunately, all the information that we have is three units. He says, well, we'll deal with that later. If you look at the building permit that was issued at the time, I had on there three units. If there was any discussion relative to the fourth unit and some issues well relative to the fourth unit, because everything that we had up to this point said three units, I would have hoped somebody would have come back to me and said it was actually a four unit property. And at that time I would say, well, let's go through a ZBA and get it clarified. This is permit 8844 you're referring to? Probably. Did you fill this out and George Pizza signed it, or was this him that fulfilled? George and I sat down together and signed it. He didn't have his glasses. Okay. Yet. So uh, we issued the permit for three units. Everything that was coming in at the time was for three units. Apparently, what I have found out over time is that what the speculation is is that that area on the second floor there's an apartment on the first floor apartment on the second floor apartment on the third floor this room that had its own separate bathroom was subletted out <clears throat> now is if that that can be it can't be an issue Let's go back to what you is. Is there a separate entrance to that room from the outside of the house? No. Yes. There's yes. the crux of the whole issue. When If you're talking about a unit, it has to be a legal unit. Just because somebody, and here's the problem with that's, the that's, way that's, that's written. Yeah. Anybody can just come in and say, hey, for 10 years, I've had this. But they have to show proof. I've asked for proof. This is the only time that I have seen anything that, should, that indicates four units. It's never been granted, given to us. I've asked for it consistently through his lawyer. Now, a unit has to still be legal. Yeah, you have to have sanitation, you have to have living, and you have to have um, the ability to cook, but you also have to have egress, proper egress to get in and out. This doesn't. I mean, one of the things that we I discussed with the contractor was, can we get get this room as part of the second apartment? It was a simple, easy way of making this area part of that second apartment, just by taking the bedroom that was next to it, creating a small hallway that went to the door uh, that actually is part of the second floor unit. Uh, I mean, my, my, some of this information that you have just received, I wish I had received from day one. I never did. I can only go on what I've been given. And the information I've been given up until the time, till today, is three units. 
Where is the egress for this? Because you're saying that there is egress for it. The, the, so when you go in the front door, yeah. you have unit one to the left. You go up the stairs on the second floor, and you have unit two to the left, uh -huh. okay? And you have this unit to the right. So it has its own door up the hallway, just as every other unit does. And then you go up to the third floor, and there's that unit up there that, that has it. And, and so there be unused space on this, the second yes. floor, right side, that's, th that's the yeah. unit in there? Mm -hmm. And, and to, to Mr. Neihart saying that this is the first he's ever heard of this being a four unit, October This is the 8th, first time I've gotten any documentation that shows a four unit. October 9th, 2018. On another note, this is an email from Mr. Kisa to Mr. I think that this is not um, a hearing uh, item. Uh, for Mr. Neihart, we, we need to be looking after this in, on its merits. Correct. So, you know, we've heard from him. We've asked some questions. I'd like to stick to. I would too. And, and all I'm saying is that on October 9th, Mr. Kitsa sent an email to Mr. To Mr. Uh, uh, Neihart talking about the fourth unit and, and, you know, offering to come to the ZBA to hook up the to to address the fourth unit, and instead of doing that, he yes. orders it disconnected. Oh, please! Email. It's the last page on the packet I gave you, right? Well, I got two packets. <coughs> Number seven. Number seven. Right here. Those are the photographs of the of the unit. It's the third floor unit, right? Second, no, second, second floor. 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 Look, if you take this page out, you can put the plan like that. This might be more like CC here. Mm. Well, no, here, overly liberal. Yeah, where's the bathroom off of the unused space then? Because I just see two closets. This is more helpful. Um, so there's the bath here, and against the bath is the kitchen. So there's cabinets in the sink. Is the bath open? It's just entirely studio? Nope. No. Nope. There's you walk into the hallway. And yeah. The bathroom's here. Right. The kitchenette is along this wall, and that, that also has a kitchen sink and cabinetry. The so bathroom is in the hall? No, it, it has a little hall in the unit. It has a tiny stub hall when you walk in. So it's something like that? Like a door in and then the kitchen along there? So, yeah, just to clarify, so you would come in and mm -hmm. right, roughly, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a door here, and then the kitchen, of course, is along here, so there's a sink here, and the fridge is here, and then like the hot like the microwave was on the stairs. The bathroom is inside the, the bathroom. Right? Inside the unit. Yeah. It's outside the unit. No, it's inside. Okay. I'm sorry. It's like more like this. Okay. Right. Yeah, there are photographs of all this. This, this, I want to speak to this, but um, I'll give you this too because it, it has photographs corresponding to each unit. But that document there, um, when we had a meeting with, with Mr. Nyhart on September 24th, I brought that document for him about the fourth unit and what I had said again is you know trying to go through the proper channels was we agreed that there was some unresolved issues with that fourth unit I presented that color coded with the four units and the delineation and also as we said we, we would agree to go before the ZBA if there was an issue with that um, and well, that was the house was started without permits so I want to speak to that actually um, I actually took some notes from from what Mr. Nyer was just saying the stop work order was issued, absolutely. Um, this is where things started to go downhill, is the purpose where the intent of that property was to um, refresh those units, fresh paint, refinish the floors. It wasn't meant to do what happened with that unit, which tripled, quadrupled the budget. The plumber went in there to do some plumbing work, and the plumbing inspector wanted things opened up so he could see what needed to be done, and we were given the order to replace everything. To do that, they had to open up the walls. They opened up the walls. We were told we were going to have to replace all the plumbing. That's how that started. Mr. Kitsa was hired to go down. He went down to town hall, and I wasn't there, but he went down to town hall and spoke with Mr. Neihart. Mr. Neihart left that meeting. As I'm told, again, I was not there, and went down and issued the stop work order. So we were in the process of deciding what needed to happen for these permits. It wasn't that we were intending to do this work without permits. I, that's not the plan. The plumber pulled the permit. We don't expect the plumber to pull a permit and not pull these other permits. The plumber had pulled a permit for his work. So it was on the radar. There was no intent to do this off a radar. Um, Mr. Kitsa was down there to talk about the scope of work. 
So did we pull a demolition permit? No. Did this thing get out of control and go way beyond what I wanted? Absolutely, way beyond. You so. said this thing, you mean the work that the plumber was doing and having to open a wall? Once walls were open, then we required to update everything. It just, it, it got out of control. What was supposed to be a little $30,000 budget would have put a first time investor out of business. It was a disaster. And, and, and may I ask if this was not a unit, if Mr. Neihardt considers this not a unit, then why is, did he order the plumbing disconnected? If it's not an illegal fourth unit in his view, why was the plumbing disconnected? You can't have it both ways. Either it's a unit and he thinks it's illegal and needs to be disconnected, or it's not a unit and it should have been left alone. The plumbing was, I'd never ordered the plumbing disconnected. I don't do that, that's not my job. The plumber Somebody uh, ordered deals the with that with the plumbing inspector. And, and most of the plumbing was out of the building. I went in, the first time I went in there was essentially gutted. I mean, the fourth unit, I mean, uh, it's a gray area, but unfortunately, if they want the fourth unit, it will have to, the whole building has to be sprinkled, it has to go to a whole new level of everything. If they want to do that, that's fine, but it's not, it is what it is. That's fine. If you want to overrule them and, and allow the fourth unit, uh, we'll deal with the other the other issues. I, want the, I was hoping to just speak to, uh, just respond to a couple other points. That permit that you have there for three units, um, I had worked with them to fill out a permit. I never had seen that particular permit that you have there. I saw it for the first time when it was submitted to the attorney. In your so, packet or intense by your permit? The, the permit that's apparently the, the permit for that property. So okay. the, I think you call it the ADO. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That first time I, if you look as an owner, I don't believe that either of us had signed that permit. So it, unfortunately, it was my first time seeing that. Again, I thought we made it very clear in that September 24th meeting in Jason's direct email to Mr. Nyhart that we're not intending to abandon this fourth unit, but let's bring it through the proper channels so that everybody's doing the right thing with this. Yeah, but Mr. I, Keats has signed it as your owner's agent. Huh. But I think the owner still signs a permit, uh, process, authorizing an agent. Process-wise, if uh, if somebody has three units and they want to add a fourth unit, what what process what what would the, what would the process be to do that? Go right in front of your board. I don't even think that's typically allowed. Because you, you need to get a yeah, that, that would have a to, special permit. Right now, it's a variant. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a, we don't allow. Can't get a can't go from a one unit, one family to a two family or to a three family without coming to the board. And talking about like the, your, your point about the, the detriment, so I'm familiar with that from the past year. I think, you know, from my perspective, whether that's an added bedroom allowed, it's a person in there or maybe two, I don't know, versus that small studio, it's a person. I mean, I don't, I think the capacity of the building doesn't really change in either instance. Um, part of why this was not a personal issue for me, but it was a, a, a bigger concern than that, that the rental amount isn't a significant one, but this was particularly the unit that I had proposed to pledge as an affordable housing unit for the town stock for the development on Colony. And it seemed like the simplest and, and cleanest way to provide an affordable unit, the town gets the credit for one unit for a small space that might have one person. Um, so that, that throws that whole plan that I had with the planning board out of whack too in terms of what is the affordable unit. But Johnny has a question. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, Peter Gelinas, I worked with him on the planning board, and I thought he was an honorable person. Neihardt never once, because I always talk to Neihardt on projects before we go with the thing, what's what, and what. He had never, ever, at once, knocked Peter down for anything to me. Didn't say he was a jerk or anything like that. Nothing. He just stuck to the facts. What he's doing here with this fourth apartment, I think is outrageous. I think it's outrageous that people can violate our town, violate the rules and regulations, and start, what if everybody on Middle Street starts doing this? What the heck are they gonna do to the town? What do you think you're doing, Peter? You can, I did, Why do you do, you know the bylaws, excuse, they don't allow them. Excuse me, questions to the, to the board. To the board, please. I ain't um, talking to you, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Please, Don't everybody. talk to me. Hey, hey. Um, 
I have a question. It may have been an, asked and answered, but I didn't hear it, so I'm going to ask it again. Uh, why? What were the conditions under which that the building was um, started, the renovation was started, without any permits? It was it, so. The original plan, the plumber, the plumber went in first. He was the first one into the job. The intention was then the electrician would go in. But you know, each person goes in. He pulled his permit first. He asked to open up walls to see the plumbing, the venting, the things that they have to look for. So walls were opened up. Do you have that permit for us to see what the actual description of that permit was? I don't know if it's in the, I didn't, I don't have a copy of the plumbing permit that was pulled. Um, I can say that in terms of walls demoed, it was, it was specifically the rooms with plumbing. Uh, the whole building was not gutted at all. In fact, I can, I can show that. But the bathrooms and the kitchen areas where the plumbing were, that's what was gutted. Um, that was effectively the extent of the gutting. In fact, I can confirm when we went to insulate, there was a challenge because some of the old walls you know, weren't holding up as well to so the pressure of the insulation. So that was the extent of the gutting. Again, the intent was never to gut that property and revamp the whole thing. Um, when you say gutted, was just sheetrock removed or were there studs and framing removed as well? Sheetrock was removed for access to the wall. Okay. Yeah, I agree that when I went in there, it was uh, mostly opened up. The right. opened up in the bathrooms and kitchen areas, which is a significant area of the building. I think, you know, it's, it's, it's not my intent to create a unit. The unit is there, and I hate being in this position at times, but when you when you buy something with that purpose and you see it as 10 units and that there's no other records or information out there, um, it's not to, I didn't make this unit. This unit's existed long before I've been doing any of this. And so, um, you know, my intent is not to destroy this town. It's, it's, it's a small unit. I don't think it changes the occupancy of the building. Um, it could cause some safety conditions if there's no real egress. So there's an egress up. There's that egress that all the other units have to that main stairwell. Um, I would point out, you know, I'm just thinking out loud as, as I think through this building, but the building next door, which was at the time owned by somebody else, had a second floor unit. Um, and I believe the reconciliation on that unit was to create a, a, an extra staircase out the back for safety. I mean, that, that I think life safety issues are not a, a problem. If, if that were a concern, that would be done as part of that work there. I, think it would be <laughs> I, I don't disagree with that. There should be two ones out of every year. And this is not, it's not, it's, it's not actually Peter's fault, but my, my concern is that it's such a, it's such a light touch unit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I see, I understand the purpose of the statute is that if somebody makes a change to their house, they build it, they turn their house into a two family, they do major construction on their house and no one says anything to them. At some point, the changes have to become final and you can't come back 20 years later and say you have to turn your house back into a one family even though it's been this way for 20 years. I, but uh, to me, it kind of seems like that statute is really more for something that somebody has taken the real affirmative action with their property and nobody said anything to them and then after some amount of time, like it's yeah, deemed it's to be accepted. It's not well written because it does allow a lot of interpretation. And, and and that is the problem. I mean, this, and so I mean, they've they've used it for these reasons. So it's more of like a it's more of like a use issue, I guess, as if it's been used for a fourth unit. But but that's the part that, it, like I said, it's it's such a it's it's really a, it's a bedroom that has a bathroom in it, and then they put in in the kitchenette is is actually a sink and and a micro fridge and uh, and a and a microwave. So it doesn't even have. You know, it doesn't have a kitchen put in there, which you know you see, like T Tim has talked about, you know, in-law apartments that are like unlicensed in-law apartments, and those have you know a real kitchenette with a with, with a with a stove hookup, and, and you know, so that's like the thing for me is like I, because I I disagree with um, Attorney Seawell that I don't think you can just plug a hot plate into your room and say that now it has a kitchenette and start calling it a unit and now I say 10 years from now, oh, this is actually a two unit home that I live in. I, I think it, it kind of involves I, doing I, something to it. I don't think that that's what I said. I said that you need to have sanitary facilities, the ability to cook, and living quarters. Exactly what Mr. Nyhart told you constitutes a unit. And there are lots so, of units in this commonwealth that have, have kitchenettes like that. Tons of regress. But that's not a zoning issue. That's not a zoning issue. We're talking to the zoning board now. If you want to talk to the state board Excuse of zoning me, don't be talking to him. Talk to us. 
<laughs> this is a zoning issue. We're getting far off of the zoning issues. The question is, was this unit created more than 10 years ago? The only question you, you need to answer, yes or no, was this unit created more, more than 10 years ago? Um, so, so the statute says if real property has been improved by the erection or alteration of one or more structures, and the structures or alterations have been in existence for a period of at least 10 years. There's so, an alteration for a fourth unit. Where's the alteration there? We, the, somebody put a door, a locked door off the staircase. There's locked doors on every bedroom in most people's houses. Not in my house. You don't, you don't lock, okay. These are units, well, it would be locks. Well, it's a keyed entrance to okay. a door. That was an, that was an improvement. A, a modification, uh, an alteration. Yeah. Somebody put it in a kitchen with a refrigerator, a sink, um, facilities for a kitchenette, you know, for, for cooking facilities. Somebody made alterations to this property, or there wouldn't be a separate unit with separate kitchenette, separate bathroom, key lock door off of the staircase, the main staircase. It's but did you make those alterations? No, no, no he, he didn't. More but than that, 10 so, years ago. But, so, but I just, the issue that I'm having is just that those are such small alterations. And I would, I would actually think that that statute is really aimed at larger alterations. <laughs> well, does it say large alterations? It just says... I, I think that I, well, an like just describe things that are like like that's a that's like if you say I put a painting on the wall now there's an alteration here I'm going to call it a right. unit I mean like right. like like there's a hot plate in there that, like I don't even I don't even know that anything's even like I guess plumbing codes were violated or whatever because like there was a sink put in but a sink doesn't even make it there's a, I have a sink in my basement it doesn't make it a unit. As a bathroom and a sink in my basement, if I plug in if I plug in a microwave down there ten years from now, I can sell my own home as a two-family. If you put a separate egress in there and lease have a separate it for, egress. for and then start leasing it for a second unit, and it happens for ten years, you've got a two-family. So even though I haven't made any changes to it, I can just start calling you've made it. Made alterations? Like, you no, I haven't. Put, it's just how the house is built, and I can just start calling it a separate. Well, then unit. it's not an alteration, but somebody well, made that's, an alteration that's because my, this that's was a three-unit. <laughs> house and now it's a four unit Somebody, house. Had to, <coughs> alterations gentlemen, to gentlemen, gentlemen, I think you know we could argue about this for a long time. What concerns me and what interests me really is that um, so many of these property information sheets, zone or I'm um, sorry, real estate sheets, they list it as multifamily, three family, but then they have four units. That's right. And they list four units. That's right. And I think it, it's a legitimate concern that these could be misunderstood because it says three but there's four. <coughs> And, and it lists the fourth unit on several pages. So I think that needs to be If I may, Linda, though, I considered. asked a question about that earlier, and Mr. Gelinas informed us that it's essentially a carbon copy of the previous MLS or the property listing card, which the town itself had listed as three units. Right. So that's but not that actual data. That is, as far as I understand, actually inputted by each individual agent every time it's listed. It's more I, of an import of... I agree, but it's also more factual than anything else we have. No, the factual is... And uh, is that there are four units. There are actually four was units. Was rental income listed across all MLS listings for that fourth unit? No, the rental income was listed the 10 years ago as the 160. And they listed uh, rents for a couple of the units the second time. I'm told that the, the seller that sold it to G&K has passed, that the person that was familiar with the property. Seb Chomp, was it Seb Chomp? I'm not Seb? sure. Yeah, I don't, okay. I don't know the name of the, um, the agent at the time. Oh, OK, OK. Um, so, but it, it was, in 2009, it was $160. It was $160 is what they were receiving. Um, and that MLS in 2009 listed the fourth unit at a rental income of $160. Mm -hmm. And then after that, there was no listing, but it was continued to be. And the MLS. listing of 2017 to 2018 was four units posted. Um, and that's well. Only two of them had rental had information. Two units didn't do that. And that creates another issue with you guys. I mean, what I've been told after all this started with um, going to you, your board, is that it was subletting. Does that make it a unit just because somebody's, Who we, told you we have the ability in this town to sublet our bedrooms. Does that create a unit? No. You have the ability to sublet. That's that for, that's apparently what happened here was it a sublet. That doesn't create a fourth unit. So I just want to speak but to that. No, go ahead. So I'm sorry. sorry. Tell me if you want to. I think that was keyed. That that space, first off, is not connected to another unit. So I don't see how it, how it could be a sublet. Because if, if we have somebody sublet something, mm -hmm. um, it's a space 
that's part of their space. But like to Andrew's point again, you can't have an ensuite bedroom and throw a hot plate in it. And call no, it you know, no. But that's not connected to another unit. It's, it was keyed differently. It's a different entrance. It, it, I, I really truly. But it's an entrance off of a hallway, right? It's, it's an, it's the yeah. common hallway. The common so hallway. Yeah. What's that? What was the How hallway does on the, the floor? unit that's encircled with blue because it's separated by the ascending or descending stairs? How do they? Oh, they have that common around the stairs to get into the bedroom. Yeah, right. So they have to pass by the egress for their the living room is on one side, and then they have a little hall. See what I mean? Like I didn't know if they could go around this way, but there's a common hallway there that. So they have to. So for this tenant, this, go, this is going up to the. They have to floor. go into the common hallway to go across to the other bedroom. No, this uh, you can't tell from here because of the drawing, but this goes around. It does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And now, does this bedroom have access to the common hallway as well? For their second egress is back out to the hall, not not this unit, but it's out to the hall. So where's the first little, egress here? Their first egress is into the yeah. This okay. is a hallway towards the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. And then there's another egress out yeah. of that bedroom. Yep. Yeah, exactly. It does seem to be sort of a part of the other apartment. It's not at all. Well, there's no way to get into that apartment from other than the common hallway. Right. So you couldn't really say well, well, I mean, if you look at the second you floor, floor could be, you had a common hallway at the top of your yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like that's what I was just going to say. It's a common hallway, like you have on the second floor of any any house. And if you just take the one, you can make that a separate. But it's not. I mean, to you know to. Mr. Zelinas' point too, or his lawyer's point there, that it did have a keyed entrance separate from the common hallway, which other apartment complexes do have. I mean, you do have shared hallways and locked doors. And there is a shared hallway, but locked door, to the apartment on the left, as well as the studio on the right. Each has its all own. four. Yeah, all four units come off that. You know, the hallway up mm -hmm. the stairs. It's it's all the common owner space, right, that everybody accesses their units from. And they all have locked doors. Is they there, all have locked doors. Is there a key door to the, that back bedroom? Which back bedroom? <laughs> off of the, the, uh, the larger blue one. Is it key going off into the common hallway? It's, well, it is, it is. That bedroom is locked off, obviously, because it's an exterior door for them. Okay. Yeah. Andrew, I mean, if you want, I mean, you have, did you talk to the town council? You can request, you know, a continuance and talk to town council on, on this whole issue. That might be a good to idea. To get some advice if you so desire. Because he is I mean, but for available for you guys. I don't know. Again, I, if I had some of this information and we sat down and talked a little bit, maybe we wouldn't be here. But still, all in all, I would still say, let's make it legal by coming in front of you guys. And then, unfortunately, if you have the fourth unit, you have to go through the, which is not part of this, but um, upgrading it to make it legal for uh, the building codes. So. This um, hearing was straightforwardly to um, look at the appeal you had regarding the plumbing. Mm -hmm. And this board theoretically could um, grant the appeal or not. But the permit to reconnect, to allow for reconnection um, to the studio unit doesn't list it as a fourth unit. So I'm. I'm Sorry, Lenny, can you repeat that? I'm just wondering if our if, if if this is limited to plumbing, then it's not our purview. If it is um, that we're supposed to uphold this, uh, grant this appeal or not grant it, under the circumstances we've already heard, then that isn't our purview. So I'm a little concerned about the wording here. I think that the, the issue here is that the the denial of the permit was because. It was deemed to be a zoning violation, not a building code violation or a plumbing code violation. Is that, is that true? Well, I, I based it on the mere fact that everything that was in front of me was the three units at the time. I mean, we, we put the, the, the building permit, which they had for a while, Pro said three units. I Pro mean, if there was a if there, uh, why didn't anybody come back? Process-wise, process um, 
if the if the if this if the decision is essentially a rejection of a plumbing permit as a zoning violation as a zoning violation but you're but you said that you don't that how does the how does the plumbing inspector relate to you as the building inspector um, I guess like chain of command wise and like and an officer, even just just the parallel so, so is this actually an appeal of the plumbing inspector's decision? Or, like, I mean, how, just in terms of how we... Well, it's an appeal I, I, of a denial of a permit, right? Okay, just so you guys know, the plumbing inspector had a real question about this. And the plumber had a question about it, too. Is, there, is this a fourth unit or not? Can, can we do this? So it came by, from both of them. And I said, look, everything that we have in front of us right now is three units. I don't have anything that shows four units. But so if, uh, like, if, so say, say the, so I, the creation I mean, of a design. I told them, no, I, I build, everything has to relate to the building permit. If, okay? someone, if someone has three units, if someone has three units or two units or whatever, and they come, they go, they go to get a permit, and it looks like they're building. They they go get plumbing permits. It looks like they're going to build a, a kitchenette. You know, they're putting a gas stove in, and, and yes. they want to put it in the toilet. Yes. And so, and it looks, it looks to the plumbing inspector like they're trying to build another unit. Would that be typical that the the plumbing inspector would say, "I'm denying that because you you only have two units here, and this looks like you're trying to build you a can third." You can do that. You yes. Do that? And in this case, he came to me and said, "What do we do about this?" I mean, it looks like they want a fourth unit. I well, said, well, unfortunately, what we have. To your question, so the issue about whether the plumbing permit should issue does relate to whether we make a finding that it's mm -hmm. proper existing. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't forget, that, that plumbing was connected until yeah. the plumbing inspector ordered it to be disconnected. So well, we're just yeah, trying to, I don't somebody think, ordered it disconnected. I think a lot of it was removed by the plumber. No, it was ordered to be. Well, removed. how do you know? You weren't the there. Worker, the workers were using that bathroom of it, so. Yeah, they were using the bathroom. I'm talking about the the sink in the bedroom. That's that makes the unit. So I mean, it was all a it was unit. by the time we got in there. Mr. Nyer just told you that that sink made it a unit. It's a unit. He just admitted that that's a unit. <laughs> I'd say what was I, in the in the space. It was a unit. It was completely plumbed until the plumbing was ordered to be removed. There was no way that Mr. Gelinas and G and K would voluntarily just take the plumbing out of the unit and just make it uninhabitable. Well, that doesn't make any sense at all. And then why would they go apply to reconnect it? They it started was, the work without permits in the first place. So why, why would they? I mean, no. I, look, I, I mean, I, there's no doubt that there were four units in this building. That this well, is a unit. There was no doubt that there were four units in this building. I at think least it really since gets down to what the definition of a unit is. You just told them that that it had the sink made it a unit. It had cooking facilities, sanitary facilities, and, I, and living quarters. And I that's told a unit. you that it also has to have proper egress. But that's not a zoning matter. I well, don't. Gentlemen, I disagree. don't talk to each other. I, I, I'm talking to the board, and I'm telling the board that that egress is not a zoning issue. You show me the zoning bylaw that requires a second egress. That is a sanitary code requirement, and a sanitary code um, is not zoning. Um, well, yes and no. I mean, it's no. not zoning per se, but if we are, if we grant variances and and, uh, and grant appeals, we can attach conditions. And the conditions could include putting in an egress in. So just as an example. I disagree with that. Well, Either it is a unit or it is not a unit. And there's no conditioning whether it's a unit or not a unit. It was a fourth unit. And um, and as a matter of zoning, it was ordered to be disconnected. And well, so you're, you're telling us that I over and over it. isn't going to help. <laughs> What's that? said so if you tell us that over and over, it isn't going to help because you've already said it. I, I just want to speak back to the permitting situation. The, um, I, what what date was that? Because I again that, that permit that was issued that says three family, um, I believe I would assume was issued after the September twenty fourth meeting. There was no date of application. Okay. Some so, of these permits that we have that that the building inspector provided us with say single family. Some of them say three and four family. Some so of them say two family. The, the work 
the work was was started, the demolition was started without a permit, yes. I agree with that. We paid the fees, we got charged double fines, it was well over eight hundred dollars. And you know, it was a it was a technicality over this issue with the plumber needing the walls open. And should there have been a demolition permit, sure, but we paid a good chunk of money to get that resolved. Um, that being said, again, September twenty fourth, that sheet that I gave you that has the highlighted with the pictures of each unit, that's what I provided to the building department on September 24th in that meeting. Um, so I, I get confused when we're told that we, I never brought forth four units and then Jason had emailed on October. So I'm, I don't know where the disconnect was in all of this, um, but it's there. Uh, does any, anyone anyone else in the uh, in the crowd have any uh, questions or comments? Come on. No. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> uh huh. That's right. <laughs> I mean, we could we could get an opinion from town council. I mean, uh, I think there's. I also think there's 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 evidence that, that it's been. I still I have an issue with the, with the creation the definition of it. Wait, what, what's the creation? It's actually not the definite. I understand the definition of a unit, but I, I just I I am chafing a little at whether you can create a unit by taking such small steps. But uh, but I, but what, whatever the case is, it seems like it has been used as a fourth unit. Set. and I think I think just as Attorney Siebel said, I don't think it. I don't think what the I don't think what the town calls it really matters, you know, uh, to the statute, and I don't think, and I don't think actually what the MLS listings call it matters either. I, I think it's a question of fact for us to kind of try to suss out. I, I think probably to that extent, I, I think you know the well, the grounds for them proving that it's been used the, for more than ten years is the fact that the MLS reports. No, but I'm saying like his like his MLS reports, like the ones from like I don't know. I mean. How Peter listed it and how and what what it gets called on the permits and everything is kind of secondary to me anyway. I, mean, I, I kind of think the oldest, the old like listings where someone's calling it a three permit, but you know, sort of calling out that there's four, a three family rather, calling out that there's four units in it. And, you know, like these, the one from and and I didn't list those. That was right, right. Those are the old ones. The other agents. I think there's legitimate uh, opportunity for confusion. Um, between the listings and some of the other documents that switch between three and four. Um, I'm pretty clear on what a unit is also, and I think it is a unit. So I just, well, we I, could go to the town council. But we I mean, I, I, I just like think that, I, I, I kind of don't really think that town council is going to have like a black and white answer to it either, right? I like I think it's going to be a question. And, I think I kind of just thinking. I, 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 I mean, they have, they have. I guess I suppose I've never been for more than, than ten. He's not town council. No town council. Oh no, he's gonna be outside attorney. Mm -hmm. he's, he's just gonna give us. Will he give us a legal opinion? I don't even know how it works. I don't know. I've never gone to him. He paid me. Well. It's their opinion, so but mm -hmm. yeah. you can take it either way. I I would be. I would be inclined to find that it's been used as a unit, as a fourth unit, uh, for more than ten years, and uh, but that you know, just kind of noting for the record that that there's still going to be sanitary, and, you know, all the other code, all the other code stuff to be complied with in order to use it as a, you know, but that's kind of outside of us, but just kind of flagging that that we're not giving like a variance to use it mm -hmm. in any way, but that we're just making a kind of a limited finding that. Actually, we're just granting, we're not granting an appeal. Yeah, well, we're allowing the appeal, but we're, kept, I, mm -hmm. we're allowing the appeal and making a finding that, you know, based on this documentation, which you know, I understand is new to Tim tonight, too, you know, that it looks like going back to, you know, these people who owned it for eight years, you know, they called out that there was, that there was what four units and then I the people will say on that, because if I was given that, I might have changed my mind. Well, I will tell you that, that he had the statement of, of the condition of the property because it was filed with the application. So, and he had it before that town council had seen it. You know, it could just be Attorney Seawald's 
timeline that's laid out here that makes it clearer. <laughs> I tried to be as clear as I could. I think it didn't help. I mean, it didn't help because you had started all that work without permits. That sort of, you know, lends Mother. a negative to your efforts to General. rehab this building. Mm -hmm. Did this project come in front of the building inspector in its entirety before they even start doing anything? Because, I mean, he's a businessman, I'm a businessman. You wouldn't want to know what the overall finished project is going to cost me after everything's done and said, and can I do this? And I'm asking, was there a plan with everything in it that said, look, we're going to do this? We're going to have to sprinkle the whole building if this kicks in and what, all this extra expense. It's like, let's go to this point and then, oops, we got another barrier. Go, let's go to the ZBA. So, to me, if I owned that, I would have came to the ZBA before I did any kind of construction to say, hey, look, clarify what we got here. And if that is clarified, then there should be no problem. What he said. Well, I, I think what Mr. Jelina said was that there was there was discussion about moving forward with the three units and kind of holding up or figuring out of kind of figure out over time what was going on with the fourth unit and then the re the rejection of the permits has has kind of expedited trying to figure out what's going. The on. The original with the permit didn't say four apartments. Well, right. That's right. The project do evolve. Well. But there was he. I think I don't want to speak put words in Peter's mouth. My understanding of what he said tonight was that he thought they were going to address that fourth unit as the project as the project went on, and then with the rejection of the of the plumbing issue, it kind of brought it to a head. I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. what. That's what mm -hmm. As the owner, I did not see that permit. I mean, you know, the, the fact that it called out three families so clearly. I don't know how. All right. So, um, someone make a motion. What pursuant are you? You wanted to talk to the town council or just make a finding? Let's just. I think we just make a finding. Linda, you have the table in front of you if you want to do it. You can read it there or pass it. Oh, sure. So I can just see the proper reading. Or make a motion for all to do. All right. I'll make a motion for. So, uh, so I think. Just yeah. let me stop you before you make a motion. Right. I think okay. we need. I think we need to make. I think the motion should address that we want to. Um, allow the appeal for the connection of the plumbing in the studio unit and also based on the finding that the student and, and that we're making a finding that the studio apartment based on this documentation has been used for more than 10 years. And again, that uses going forward will be subject to all of the codes. All the codes. So. Can we have a condition? Yeah. Then, then addition, <laughs> I would like to see an egress. Yeah. Has well, nothing to do with the zoning, but I had my granddaughter lives in my egress. downstairs for two and a half years. Oh. And I spent six thousand dollars to put an egress in, so she'd have a second escape. Package. But you can't condition a finding on something on zoning. The appeals. Denial. He heard you though. The, appe yes. the appeals for the denial. The, we're allowing the appeal. The denial. Okay. We're making a find based on our finding. Right. That the unit. <laughs> The studio unit has been used for more than 10 years. Okay. So I'll move to make a motion. <laughs> uh, to allow the, to appeal the denial of the permit um, for the construction of the unit based on the findings presented today that the unit has been used for more than 10 years as in the fourth unit in the property. And subject to the codes. Subject to the codes, of course. Then a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.